In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to beat that transponder-based anti-theft system in your car very cheaply, very inexpensively. So if you are a locksmith, you will not want to watch this. You might want to turn this off. Now, for the illustration, I'm going to have to buy one thing, possibly two. You're a big spender. Now, first thing is this relay. These are a standard single-pole, double-throw, 30-amp relays. Um, just because the 30 amp doesn't mean that we need 30 amps, that's for sure, because this is a very low current type application. But this one here is just a standard DEI 610T relay that we sell. I will put up a link so you can follow us and get one of these if you need to get one. If you don't have it lying around, they're cheap enough. They're only about a buck or two. They're very cheap. Um, there are five pins on these relays because they are double throw, but we're going to use four pins. So if you don't know much about relays, I will show you real quick about a relay, how to use it, and only the four pins that you need to know about how to use for this uh, job. On the top, you have 87. On the bottom, you have 30. These are the two that are going to connect on the loop for this transponder um, application we're going to use. The center pin, we don't use. The outer two pins, of course, are the coil. That's 85 on the left, 86 on the right. These are the two that's going to click the relay and close these two together. And I'll show you a little bit later in the video the reason why we need to know about that. But for now, that's our relay. This here is a pretty cheap five-wire uh, pre-wired relay socket. These are like 59 cents on our site, but they're, they're nice. Uh, they make the job a lot smoother and a lot neater. So if you want to invest the 50 cents, I'd say, you know, good for you. I would definitely buy one. So I'm going to take my relay. I'm going to plug it right into the bottom of here. Now, now the pins are disappeared, as you can see, but I'm going to tell you what's what. The top here, this is 87. The bottom is 30. And these two here, white and black, is my coil. Okay, so with that said, we're just going to leave that there for now. This here, since I don't have a rear vehicle in my, in my video, I'm just going to use this stuff as illustration. This is going to be the, the ignition tumbler where you stick your key into your car when you start it up. Now, if you got a car and you were blessed that you only got one key instead of having two or three like you should have, everybody should. Because God forbid if you had this key, you lose it, and you go to the store thinking you're going to start your car with a regular blank metal key, you're going to find the sad reality that that's just not going to work for you. Now, inside these keys, this here is a Chrysler from my 300. Um, GM has their pass key 3 version. Ford has a PAT system. The list goes on. Almost every manufacturer from 90, 98 to current going forward, I see that these are not going to stop anytime soon. So you, you're going to have this in almost any car you're going to have. But the problem is, is that if you get a car and you only have one key because you lost it, um, whatever the case is, these keys are really expensive to go out and buy, especially on like this car, these Chryslers. The deal will just charge you and charge you like pain, painfully a lot of money. Two hundred dollars to plug it into a computer, a hundred for the BCM, seventy-five for a key. You, you, by the time you leave out of that place, you're spending five hundred dollars, and you can't even believe what you got for your money. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing they're going to do, a lot cheaper, maybe around under five bucks. You could even get away with doing this for under a dollar if you have half the stuff that I have here on my table. So with that said, this is my key. My relay, that's my imitation ignition. Um, over here I have my uh, meter. I'm going to use this real quick just to show you folks about the relays. If you already know about relays, this will be boring to you, but I'm going to show not everybody is blessed to know about how relays work. Now this here is just two wires for my power supply. It's a standard 12-volt power supply, just like the power supply in your own vehicle. Now, like I said, pin 87 and pin 30 are the two you're going to use to create a loop to trick your car into seeing another key signal. So I'm just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take my meter, set it on continuity, wrap it around these two guys. Now, when I take power, it doesn't really matter which way you go, because you can't go wrong, you just click in a relay. But to be fair and to do things right, I'll just tell you, the 85 should always see a, a, a negative signal. So I'm going to do it the right way. If you do it the wrong way, that's, that's, that's for you. But for me, I do it right. Now when I click these two together, you're going to hear a beep from my meter. And you can also hear that relay clicking. So what's happening here is that when I'm applying 12 volts, I'm clicking the relay and I'm closing these two connections. When there's no power applied, these are, these are open and then not have nothing in common with one another. They're not making any type of uh, connection. Only when the relay is, is, is being clicked, these two are going to be a closed circuit. 
okay? So, what you need to do in your car is you're going to need to find out where your ignition wire is. Now, obviously, I can't tell every person watching this video where their ignition wire in their car is, but again, if you follow that link on the top of the video to our website, on the bottom right, there is several links that show you places you can go to get wiring, colors, locations, and specifics about your own car to tell you where that, that ignition wire is. And when I say about the ignition wire, don't uh, think that I'm saying accessory or it's hot when it's on. It, that's not good enough. It has to be a cranking ignition wire, meaning when you take your key and you turn it to the first position, that's the accessory position. That's when your radio comes on, you heat. But then when you crank your car, and it rests back, that's going to be your ignition position. There's a difference, okay? When you put the key onto your accessory position, when you start your car, that wire is going to go to ground while it's under the crank position. When it comes back, it's going to stay hot. Cars with these computers, they are very picky. They don't like that stuff. You have to make sure you go to a real cranky ignition wire. So when you get in your car, you have your test light, whatever you're using to test your wires, put your key in, turn it to the ignition position, make sure the wire is hot, start your car while it's cranking it should be also hot and when it comes back it should be hot and the keys off of course it should be low at ground and that's the way it should be that's the only way it can be okay so with that said I'm going to take our relay start wiring this right up don't need this anymore so in your car let's just say for instance that you have a GM a lot of people probably half the people watching this probably do have a GM now in your car, the thick pink is going to be your primary ignition wire, so let's just go with that for now. So that ignition wire in your car, we're going to take that, actually we'll leave that for a second. First thing I'm going to do is take 85, take that and put it to ground. So wire your relay, pin 85 to ground, always ground. Okay. These two wires that are left over with, You just have to create a loop around the key and the key tumbler. So how I'm going to do that is just take a regular old piece of wire. doesn't have to be anything fancy. doesn't have to be pretty. just has to be a piece of wire. I typically use about anywhere from 36 to 42 inches of wire. That's about a good rule of thumb. What you're going to want to do, take that wire, strip that back. Once you have your wire all stripped, take one end of it, put it to pin 87 on the relay. The other end to pin 30. Now you have a loop. Okay, with all this extra wire, you're going to need to do two things with it. One, is to go around the key. Now, like I said, inside the key, that's where the transponder chip is located. So you need to take a piece of this wire from the relay, wrap it around three, maybe four times. You may not get this perfect every time the first time, but I'm sure with a little bit of patience you'll get it. Once you get that on there, I'm going to make my little ghetto key wrap. do it two times you could use tape if you don't have these but if you got a wire it's how you use it that wire is not going to go anywhere boy this is a budget video this wire strip is uh, a lot to be desired I'll tell you what okay so now off the relay, we got the key in line of the wire between 87 and 30 of the relay. Now, with all this excess wire that you have, typically you want to have it about, mm, I'd say about a foot and a half to two feet away from the key cylinder. Because God forbid if you ever find your other key that you were missing, if, the, if there was such a thing, and you stuck it up, and you had this key here, and you had another key that worked, and you stuck it inside and turned the, the car on and ran it, the car can actually pick up through RF induction the two key signals, which is just as bad as not having any key signal, because it'll confuse the computer and it'll make the car start and shut down, and you'll be no better off. So when you do this, make sure you have a good amount of length between 
your 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 key that you're doing with this bypass and your key cylinder. Once you have your key cylinder, take some more of this wire, wrap it around. Again, you might have to fiddle with this. You might have to do it two times, three times. Some cars like it in the front of the ring. Some people like it in the back. Some people sometimes the cars just want to see it on the side. That's entirely up to you. You're going to have to figure that out. But most of the time, three wraps is going to do the trick. Take this. You want this to stay on there because this is your lifeline. This is your one and only key. So make sure that when you do your work, make sure it's done tight. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean it can't be done right. This time I'm not going to use those god awful wire strippers. Okay, so now you see you have your relay wired up. You have one end of the coil grounded. The ignition I'm going to leave for, for last. You have your loop between 87 and 30 on your relay. One going to your key tumbler, other one to your key. You have about two feet of distance between the two. It's important. Now when you get in there and start your car with the metal key, it's going to apply power to that relay and it's going to show this key signal to the key tumbler every single time, tricking the car into thinking that there's a valid key to start the car. The factory any theft will shut down and you can go on your way happily as can be. And that's really all there is to it. There's no big mystery to it. There's no need to go to a, a dealer and get beaten up over the head to go get yourself some fancy keys just because they say GM on them or Chrysler or whatever. This works just as well. Relay, about a dollar or two. Socket, 50 cents. Key, you already have. It's free. Um, and that's it. Simple as that. Hope this was helpful to you.